The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Hello, welcome to the eighth in uh, this series of 12 podcasts, The Ricky Gervais Show uh, with The Guardian. I'm Ricky Gervais. Hello. With me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. Uh, and Carl Pilkington. All right. So, thank you again for all your emails. Um, we're getting thousands. We, we're up to about a quarter of a million hits a week now, people listening to this show. Blimey. A quarter of a million people bothering to go in and listen to this show. Nothing else in their lives. Nothing All around the world. To do. It's unbelievable, though. North America, uh, Asia, South America, all over Europe, um, and, uh, and thanks to everyone in England as well, um, where we do it from in a little room in London. Keep going to rickygervais.com and registering, because uh, so when we finish these 12, we can email you when we come back and start again. We're going to need a, a little bit of time off to um, record the second series of extras. Well, I'll tell you more than that, Rick. You're going to need some time off just to have a little breather, because I know how hard you work. Uh, and, and you, mate. Well, thanks, mate. But, I mean, you blinking work hard. But um, Carl's been on holiday again, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because, Carl, you, you don't do anything. And you have weekends off. You take at least five or six weeks holiday a year, even though you haven't got a job now. You're meant to be doing this. And yet you still so go on holiday. So a holiday, basically. Yeah, why do you need a holiday? To, you, you, you potter around. Cause you, it, your, your, big, your big day last week was going to the cobblers. So... Why do you need a break so much this oh, week? It's, it's just that, you know, it's it's good for your brain and that, isn't it? It's, it's, it opens well, it up a bit. You are not evidence for that. Where did you go? Grand Canary. For a week? Yeah. Just sitting around? Um, well, it, there isn't much else to do at Grand Canary. I mean, I, I don't want to go slagging a place off because every time I seem to talk about somewhere, I get into trouble for it. Right. But it's just a like a big rock. It's Brilliant. just vol volcanic, isn't it? It's and you must have looked like a, a little barnacle on that. Have you been there before? Um, been been near it before to another rock, which was just. But what you had your fingers burned? Why did you go back? Because you think, well, they can't have loads of these islands that are the same, like just a big rock with hotels on. They can't get away with it. So you <laughs> think, they well, obviously the are one. getting away with it. <laughs> but why? Why do you keep going to these places that are rocks? Why don't you investigate first? Ask your travel agent. Is this a giant rock? Because because that's what you do, isn't it? You go and find out yourself. I mean, <laughs> when when Armstrong went to the moon, what was he expecting up there? That's a fact that it's a big rock, and he still went all that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, know what that so, point was. No, so what, so what I'm saying is, though, sometimes... It, tell, it, us it, about the, tell us about the moon landing. What, as you started it, what do you know about that? You know, because, I mean, so far you've given us a lot of insight into into the uh, the moon landing. So there was Armstrong. There was, uh, there was Armstrong and that. Yeah. There was, um, a fella called Buzz. Yeah. And another bloke. Yeah. Poor bastard. Yeah, never remembered. <laughs> yeah, go on. And, uh, they went up there, got out, two of them did. One of them didn't bother. The one whose name, don't know who he was. Didn't even get out, stretch his legs, right? Went all that way. They had a potter about, had a wander, came back again. Yeah. So, that's all you need to know, isn't it? Yeah. But and in they, your opinion, pointless? Um, to me, yeah. But to them, I'm sure they had a good time, and that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just take the risk, don't you? Go and visit a place, make up your own mind. <laughs> and so, you, what do you make of this place? You enjoy it, Grand Canaria? It was just a big rock, but did you? you, you I bet you... the moon was better. <laughs> really? <laughs> what did you do? It was just, uh, you know, it's one of them. It's big hotel, which is um, that's where I made a mistake. It was one of those like big, massive places where there's loads of people. And you know, you go for your dinner. That describes a hotel. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Me. You've nailed that. But I've been to a few, that sounds like it. No, but <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean, though? There's the sort, there's the nice small ones where mm. it's just enough people, but this is like mental. And, and it was all, it was, it was full of old people, really. Ugh. I mean, that's, that's probably why it's called Grand Canaria, right? Because it's just Grand old people. Everywhere. Yeah, right. But what I thought I'd start doing is, uh, start a diary. Okay, why? Just because, I, I sort of had a bit of time on my hands and that. Just thought, write it down, write write stuff down. And do you I, hope that this one day will become one of the great literary documents like Samuel Pepys' diary? Um, I haven't heard of that. Is it any good? <laughs> You've never heard of Samuel Pepys' diary? No, the, the, the most the, famous diary uh, other than probably Anne Frank's. I've heard of Anne Frank's and that, and I thought if she's sat in a you know a loft knocking stuff up. Not much going on in her life at that point, yet sure. she was still writing it down. Yeah, whereas you've been to Grand Canary, yeah. I thought, so there is stuff going on that I can chat about. Start a diary. Sure. You started a diary? Yeah. And what are you going to do? You, did you did you keep it up every day? Yeah, just, uh Oh, can I read it, please? 
Well, the diary's meant to be sort can, of- uh, Please, can I read some out on this podcast? I- Carl! Some of it, though, is only relevant to me, it's sort of- Oh! Been, this is- please, give me it. Oh my god. I mean, this isn't- I haven't just- Look so- how big it is! <laughs> <laughs> it's it's oh one of those god. desk diaries. It's huge. It's about a foot long. And it's- ma- Oh, that is amazing. Imagine if Anne Franks had been like that. As she got out, <laughs> Right. Uh, everyone would have heard it clanked down on the desk. Yeah, but my writing's quite big, isn't it? Oh, look! Give us oh, that. Do Give you us know, that. Do you know about joined up writing? Have you this heard about that? There's no point. Amazing. Sometimes you can't read it, can you? So it's right, best okay. to- Look oh. at- Oh, look at- Oh, look. Oh, my God. It starts on the first day. This is- This is wonderful. Going on holiday to Gran Canaria today, woke up to the news that Tony Banks had died. There was a piece of- on the news about how everyone was shocked. Got me thinking about an invention. That would be good! Right. A, a watch that counted down your life. If it says you've got three days left, <laughs> go to the doctors! <laughs> 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 Told Suzanne about invention. She said she wouldn't buy one. But she said that about the iPod! How, uh, and how would this device work, this watch? I mean, how would you, uh, how would you know when you were about to die? Have you, is that a concern? Again, not for you to worry about, presumably the boffins and stuff. No, all I was thinking is that Tony Banks fella, you know, he died and everyone was shocked about it. But if you had like a little watch on. But how does it work? You can't just say, wouldn't it be good? How, how would this work? Yeah, um, I imagine you're in the patent office going, got an idea. They go, oh, certainly, yeah, Mr. Bogdan, what's your idea? Watch that counting down your life. Oh, how does that work? What? Just, just wear well, it, just pop it on your wrist. No, 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 what do you mean? Just pop it on your wrist. How does it work? Just pop it on your wrist. Brilliant. You're an idiot. Well, it's interesting that he goes on. The flight to Gran Canaria was a bit bumpy. I thought about the clock that counts down your life again, and I wondered if it would know if you were going to die in a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's querying his own, his own design. He's wondering yeah. if he would know. He's invented this. He's and invented, <laughs> now he's not even <laughs> sure. Uh, a fellow on the plane was reading Koi Mag. It was a fishing magazine. I glanced over and noticed he was reading the Pond of the Month article. <laughs> Don't think they could make it into a weekly magazine. Well, to be fair to you, I because re- I remember seeing a guy on the train once reading Carp Monthly, yeah. a magazine do- dedicated entirely to carp, and it had it had Carp of the Month, and I just thought, you know, once you're like three months in, the editor must be stressing. Have we got any more carp? We got a carp that's actually done anything? That's I reckon if they used the same one twice, there wouldn't be many complaints. No one would be noticing. No, that, well, that's the carp they used two years ago. There was a really fat bloke on the plane. He yeah. was playing on his PSP while I waited to go to the toilet. I looked at what game he was playing. It was darts. He's that fat and lazy, he can't even face playing a more active game on a games console. (laughs) Me and Suzanne got off the coach along with a couple of old people. One of them was in a wheelchair. I don't think it was wise of them to come to a volcanic island with a wheelchair. (laughs) Everywhere's pretty rough, paving and slopey. Guess I'll keep an eye on it as the weeks go on. Day two in Gran Canaria. Brilliant, we're only at day two. The hotel's a bit odd. I've never seen as many cross-eyed people in one location. <laughs> oh, that's enough, isn't it? That's amazing! Well, you may as right. well let me read on a bit more. No, this is amazing. Well, look, come back to This is a brilliant now. diary. This might be the best diary ever written. Oh. While sat listening to the kinks on my iPod, I wondered if everybody thinks in their accent. I know I do. What's, what's this? What are you talking about? Just, just that, uh... You know, when I when I've been sat there lying on the lounger, right? And I was thinking about stuff. <laughs> How do you know you think in your accent? Tell me a typical thought. Because because what I mean is, say say if I was like, if I saw something, right? Do you know how I say like, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, <laughs> no, but that was I don't have said. to. But in I, when you think, I don't think the sentence is like I'm saying it. It's just a thought. The thought appears. It's conceptual and it's already there. It's not like um, I go, Rick, what? Just, uh, looking at that fellow over there, were you? Yeah, I was, yeah. Um, I was thinking it looks a bit weird. Oh, so was I. I don't, I don't think out whole sentences. Whereas you think- have, Carl, <laughs> Carl, li- Carl, stop listening to the kinks for a minute. Look over there. More, more cross-eyed people. <laughs> no, well that's, yeah, that's Is that how your of, mind works? In a way, yeah. And Brilliant. that's when it, because, because <laughs> I thought- <laughs> <explains> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that he has to uh, think of that whole sentences. Cause I thought, that's weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't think, that's weird, isn't it? And I thought, no. I actually think in my accent. And then I thought, does Stephen Hawking, does he, when he's doing his maths and that, mm. is he, I don't know where he's from, so I don't know what his accent would be like. I think he's from, uh, Kent or Cambridge or Oxford right. or something. So, so you think he might think in his, in, in his, his voice, in that, yeah. in that voice. In his computerised voice. Just wondered. Had lunch inside today due to shite weather. 
sat next to an old fella. Old men's ears and noses carry on growing as they get older. Suzanne noticed his fingers were fat too. Maybe they continue to grow. Suzanne didn't laugh when I said her arse had the same problem. <laughs> day three, cloudy start to the day. Had pie and chips in a cafe. Had a bit of an argument with Suzanne because I thought it was daft that we were paying for food when we were on an all-inclusive holiday. Changed my mind when I saw the... They sold pie, though. <laughs> the cafe was called Tattoos. The fellow who owned it didn't have any tattoos. But we never saw his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Had a drink in a bar. Everyone sat and watched one of the local cats lick its bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest holiday in the world. <laughs> uh, That's the entertainment in that town. Went back to the hotel and had a sleep before tea. I love the fact you're like you're moaning about old people, but you're just as bad. <laughs> He's done nothing so far. <laughs> He's done nothing. He's got a hip. <laughs> oh God, God. <laughs> uh, uh, woke up to news about ducks being badly treated. There was a really ugly one with bent legs. I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! Why does he write this down? Oh god! Oh. There is a fat bloke from Bolton who is in the pool as I write this. He's got a big tattoo on his back, but I can't work out what it is. Dot dot dot. He just got out of the pool and burped. You just felt like you had to keep us abreast of that. <laughs> Everything's in the diary. I just seen it get to the point where you're going. Breathed in. <laughs> yeah. Breathed out again. There was a big fat fella in the sea who kept his t-shirt on. If you're big and fat, is there more chance of you getting burnt because there's more of you on show? I asked Suzanne and she said she didn't know in that sort of not listening kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hang about to see if the fat bloke was going to get in the kayak. <laughs> but Suzanne, <laughs> Suzanne said we had a head back. <laughs> Just let him wait in to see if he's going <laughs> to capsize. <laughs> we go home today, so we got up early to get the last bit of cloud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just that it wasn't. Uh, it, it's it's not that sunny all the time. I mean, I, I was sat in in weather that if it was like that air, there's no way I'd be sat in the garden. <laughs> yeah. But because you're on holiday, it's like, well, we got to sit in it. Put your coat on. So, are you going to continue to write this diary every yeah, single day? It's amazing. Keep this diary up. It's no, amazing. I, I, no, I will. I will keep it up because what I find as well is, I think earlier on before I went away, I think I did learn something. And because I wrote it down, I, I remembered it a bit um, better. So what was that? I just was thinking then. I forgot it now, but <laughs> <laughs> but I remembered looking back at it and not having to read it all because I remembered the end of it before I read it. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, if you've enjoyed uh, um, the diary of Carl Pilkington, um, more next week, I hope. Another week's worth. That's amazing. I'm going to try and get that published. We'll put the, uh, the odd page up on the uh, web. Go to rickygervais.com. Don't forget to register there as well so we can email you and let you know uh, what's happening. Brilliant. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Rick, who hosts this podcast? The guys at Positive Internet. Why? Now, you, I know you're a big fan of those guys. Yeah, because they're brilliant. Well, yeah, they are, and they tell you they're working overtime. Because we've had an email from Jake, who's the director at Positive Internet, and apparently he's been in touch with uh, the editor of the Guinness World Records book. All oh, right. Um, and he's hoping to see if we can get this podcast in the uh, Guinness World Record Breaking section, or the Podcast World Record Record Breaking section, or whatever they call it. I don't know exactly what record we'd have broken. I assume it's just sheer number of listeners, is it? Or, or yeah, with the number the, one? yeah, it's the number one podcast, and it's the biggest downloaded show ever at the moment. Right. Um, I think that's because people have only had podcasts for a couple of years. Yes, yeah, so well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know when the next issue comes out. I guess it's sort of December time. I used it? to get the Guinness Book of Records every year. I, I, I love it. I've never understood why it was such a big seller. I mean, presumably, who's excited to find out whether, you know, I don't know, a man that can balance three egg cups on his head has beaten the record? Well, the they're real year. records as well, obviously. I, I used to go straight for that. I really loved the sort of, uh, animals fastest, strongest, all that sort of thing, biggest. But aren't they the same every year? Well, well, no, they do change. And obviously there's, there's new entries to, to keep it exciting. Um, but what annoys me is that you, I, it looks like anyone can get in if you're willing to do something that no one else will bother with. Yeah. I, I, they did one on Big Brother where it was the, um, uh, stacking sugar cubes. And I was mm. thinking, well, no one's going to bother beating that. No. There's people that, um, uh, walk along with a milk bottle on their head. 
And no one's going, oh, I'm a bit jealous of Bill. Why? He's broken the record. What? For walking along with a milk bottle on his head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go into training tomorrow. They're ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but I do like the, you know, the, the real ones. There was one in there, I, I got on a couple of years ago, and, uh, it was about, um, uh, disasters. And there was one where there was some, um, big ornamental incense burners at this thing in, um, I think, uh, Thailand or, or Korea or somewhere. And, uh, they fell over. And they killed seven of the congregation. And the headline was Biggest Jostic Disaster. <laughs> now, again, there's no one trying to beat no. that. There's no one going, we need eight. Yeah. We need eight people. We're going for it tonight. Uh, what do I have to do? You have to stand quite near those big jostics. Okay. okay. And what record am I breaking again? Um, <laughs> we'll tell you after. Also, I think a lot of people waste their energy on this because there's one guy in there that can do the 100 metres in 11 seconds running backwards. And I want to say to him, turn round. Because I think you'd be fast forwards. You know, yeah, if you'd have only, yeah. from the age of 10, sort of, you, you, you might be, you know, one of the fastest runners in the world. Because you're never going to be considered one of the great athletes for doing that. No backwards. one knows about him. That's not going to ever be an Olympic sport, no. running backwards. No. Or, uh, well, um, another 100 metres. Oh. One of them's putting a milk bottle on his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is one to watch. There yeah. was a guy in there, um, I've always been fascinated by the guy, he had, um, the world's longest fingernails. And they were truly extraordinary. And they, and they, they, they went out and they started to curl around, obviously. And in the end, he almost looked like sort of a, you know, there's a big spiral of right. gnarled old fingernail. But I just thought, it just seemed like such a terrible affliction, really, to be walking around. You know, with, with these giant fingernails. Well, so much you can't do. Just missing out on, you know, Jeff, you come in bowling? I can't. You yeah. know, just so many different things that you've been saying. Yeah. I've never quite understood who's willing to, to have this eat into their life. You know, it's going to take over their whole life just so they can have their photo in this book. It seems a very bizarre impulse. Carl, have you ever been tempted by you know, any world breaking attempts? Do you find them fascinating or futile? Um, I mean, you don't get, you don't get paid or anything, do you? No. They and do it for the pride. We'll say like the fella who can run with a milk bottle. Could he, could he get a milk round? Um, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I, I can understand that if if you can use the skill, yeah. but like you say, if it's uh, if it's getting in the way of your life and that, then what, what's the point? There was yeah. a kid at school who said, I've, "I'm in the Goodness Book of Records." And I went, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." He said, "No, I am, I am, I am." And he brought it in, and it. Now I don't know if this is a valid claim. He, he claimed to have been in the audience for what, in this particular edition, was labelled, you know, the largest audience ever for a sporting event, some giant Super Bowl game in America, oh, and right. he claimed to have been in the audience. Now, does that? Ca does, do you think he, he he deserves to say he's in the Guinness Book of Records? Just well, as, mm. sort of. I think that's a lot. As it was the largest audience ever, I think a lot of people can claim yeah. that one. I mean, if I he wanted to get a name check on doing that, he would have been best saying. I was sat in the audience in a bath of beans. <laughs> because yeah. then that, that would yeah. add to, the, yeah. to it, and yeah. you get a little, you know, they'd have you in the picture, wouldn't they? So, <laughs> he's Mr. Trick that way. Yeah. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round. But, um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it. Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, mine was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason, particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil. How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but, um, People aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's, everyone's calling me Spud now. Now I don't know why I thought Spud. It's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato Head. I don't know why I thought Spud was a, was a cool nickname. I just, I think it's, it's a grown up it, name though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like, uh, it, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids books, like the famous five or like the Bash Street kids, they'd be Spud. And I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park. Yeah. Like, oh, here comes Spud. 
Yeah. And he gets out, all right, boys. And he's big and massive, and he, a spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I just, in my mind, it was, yeah, that I would be one day part of a gang, and it's, I'm Pinky, this is Joe Joe, and the tall guy Spud. And you know, catch on, he never really it? caught. And he just went, oh, yeah, right. And no one started, and I was hoping he'd go, you know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. Yeah. But of course. Hey, Spud, the first time I said Spud, and you go, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, um, but I think that it, it, it kind of, actually, in a way, it probably revealed that, I just was probably not in people's thoughts enough to, to get, to get for the nickname to catch on, you know, because you sort of yeah, need I, to be a real player in the I school. I think you should have gone somewhat more memorable. I mean, I'm not saying in goggle eyed freak or anything. What? Uh, what? No, no, just. Uh, well, no, no, it's good, no, it's good advice, Fatty. <laughs> Fatty, fatty pot That's belly. the problem. I wasn't fat at school, and I suppose Carl didn't have a round bald head at school, did you? Uh, well, no. You, no. <laughs> did you have a nickname? Um, not, not. Really, I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so so it, was, it worked in that sort of uh, sort of thing, you know. So there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Well, he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had him, right? right? There was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Yeah. Which is, yeah, I assume right. it's because he was at the same IQ as you. Yeah. Or, or, or he was in a coma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was, there was, uh, there was my uncle, Tattoo Stan. Oh, right. right. Yeah. He had, he had like loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. God! The the problem was because he did his tattoos himself. Oof. The ones on his left arm were really good because <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? Um, so so there was him. Oh, great! And there was um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat. Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That that's that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, innit? I mean, here that, here that, comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Sort of early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly, I think it started off with like Lorry drivers, isn't it? Yeah, truckers, yeah. Because there was that, that thing from like about 1970, convoy. it was convoy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I had one of them and my handle, I had, I had two handle different Handle mean names. is your nickname, your yeah, name. Yeah, there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had, I had a couple, I had, um, there was Pilky O one. Because right. like I said, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so I just thought, give it a number. If someone wants Pilkio 2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> that, is, that is people scrabbling for, oh, yeah. I, want Pil- <laughs> I want a Pilkio one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'd, uh, I'd box a boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's boxer boy and that. Yeah. So. Just had them too, and I used to just go on there and. Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't you... meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You're a box boy. What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right. Cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's where are you? Well, why don't you say where are you? Because just in case there's someone who's listening in who who you know you hear about this all the time, don't you? People listening, jotting stuff down. Oh, right. So, just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means, they're, they're out of the loop. They're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it? Yeah. If you're trying to track someone. It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like, I go, oh, he keeps saying that, what's your handle? And they come back with something else. I, don't, <laughs> I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like, it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes, that's what, you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You, Set them up in that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right, so yeah. what's your 20? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right, now here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, 
does that mean how big is your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's, that's oh, how old Oh, what time is it? No, how old are you? What, how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Uh, how many candles you burn in the course? Yeah. So what the, what's the answer come back? You go, uh... I'm 15. 14. Brilliant. That code, <laughs> that code, it, there's no one gonna work that out. There is no one gonna work that one out. So let's just play through this conversation. This is, is it, give us an example of how it worked. Right, so, um, so, y so, y you, you turn it on and that, and, and you start off, and, uh, there was something that you said at the start, like, uh... Hello! Just, you Breaker, breaker. Yeah, breaker, breaker, do you copy, or whatever. Yeah. Then someone will go, What does what yeah. do copy mean? No, no, his name I was. Because I, I want to hear the fascinating conversations that Carl must have had. Yeah. And you go, uh, alright, it's a boxer boy, yeah? What's and your goes, 20? What's your 20? And you go, well, just, uh, I'm in Manchester. In, in the flat. Oh, right. And you go, alright, yeah. How many candles are you burning? Mm. You go, oh, I'm 13. Oh. So, <laughs> uh, That's the end, is it? Then you sort of, then you might sort of, uh, say, what, what, uh, what was it? It was something like, what, what am I burning? Right. He's in burning again. Confusing, but go on, yeah. Why am I burning? <laughs> <laughs> the bacon, because I'm busy talking to you, you twat. That's like, what's my power? What, what, uh, what strength am I coming in at? Oh, yeah. Because then you can tell if they're quite close to you. So if you're yeah. getting someone burning a one. Well, you've told them. You said, wait, what's your 20? You go, I'm, um, I'm in Macclesfield Street. Yeah, but oh, then, right. but then you Wonder go, where they are. We've well, just told you. <laughs> Yeah, I know but, far away they are. But then you go, oh, that's interesting, because uh, you're burning, f you know, burning three. I don't normally get a three. <laughs> this is the least, <laughs> the least interesting hobby oh, do you know could what I ever do. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this, because this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again, someone will come in and go, uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means, like, there's someone sat there listening into Ooh. this chat and going, this sounds interesting. Yeah, no, it does Unlikely. <laughs> yeah. And they, they want to join in, so they sort of go, side on, you go, side on, bring it in, right? And they go, all right. <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. Once you're 20. That's the clues round again. Yeah. See you later. Once you're 20. <laughs> How many yeah. candles are you burning? Oh. And, I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make, made a note the first time so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. <laughs> Can I just confirm that you're burning 15? <laughs> It's that time again. Do the jingle. Oh, monkey you! <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna do a really good one. Okay, go. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news, you fucking. Right, you know it's it's nearly time for the Winter Olympics again. Okay. Is it? Okay. They sort of come round every four years. Is it this year? Is it? Yeah. And uh, the 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 last one that happened four years ago. Yeah. There was a there was a bit of an incident. Oh no. Oh, well, I'd know about this then, because it would be... Well, it'd be well, big news, because it's a, it's a well-known... It's televised well -known as well. Yeah. It's, uh, Do you remember any winners that were monkeys? In any of the no, tournaments? of course no, not. No, so, yeah. so it's anyway... It's not going to be that, because it wouldn't be true. Oh, on. Yeah. So anyway, one one of the uh, popular events. Um, bobsleigh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Um, yeah. you, know, it you know how it works. Well, it's you like need four men. Is it four men or five four men? It's, four, yeah. so it's definitely four men that you need, need on four a team. Is it and two, and there's two team bobsleighs. But well. they're always men, is that right, Rick? Well, that, well yeah, they have to be. Yeah. Anyway, be human, so. Human, humans. Well, that's to be humans, yeah. yeah it's okay. the Winter Olympics for. Yeah, so, so, let me just clarify. With the Winter Olympics, you can't have any animals taking part. No, and they, and they also, well, no, because they, they wouldn't be allowed to. There's no way they could disguise it, because not only would they see it straight away, right, but they have blood tests. <laughs> right, okay. So, which would show up. So they definitely know if it was well, they have blood tests. non -human. It's impossible. It would be literally impossible to have anything other than a human taking involved part. in a bobsleigh team. Fine, okay, so carry on. So anyway, this, this country, I don't want to name them, because they try to shake off this, this sort of, you know, this bad news. Oh, yeah, and you don't know. Cause and it's, it's not true. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, the, the the country was doing really well in the qualifying stages. Oh yeah. But the problem was there was there was like two members mm. who were getting all like the press and stuff. Oh right, yeah. And one of them never got a look in, right? How tall was he? <laughs> anyway, so this one member was getting fed up because the the other two were getting all the press and what have you. So he said, I "I'm not happy with this. Yeah. I'm jacking it in." Oh. So they were like, "You're joking? We've we've qualified. We're getting into like the main." race and everything mm. you can't leave us now and he said well you could do it all on your own before you know you, you, the way you were acting and that you didn't yeah. need me so i'm going mm. so they were like oh well, they, they need to replace him because there's a certain amount of people needed so uh so anyway so the clock's ticking it's getting close to the big race and everything of course it is yeah they're like what what are we gonna do here the substitute right. they took with them 
What they well, they do? must have. Yeah, yeah they would say they're So get no, him they on. didn't. They didn't. They didn't have any of them and that. It's, you know, a lot I, of injuries and stuff. Or just get a mate to do it. Just get a mate or a friend yeah, or, or the coach to do it. Yeah. But you know, there's a lot of responsibility on these people, and you mm. know, you won't want to let your country down and that. And they're like, "What are we going to do? Get a waiter or anyway, anyone? Anyway, the, the time comes to the race. Seems to be three people on it. There appears to be three. Okay. Yeah. Um, they start off, they're whizzing around the track faster than normal, they, they're beating their old records. <laughs> right, amazing. Because the new fella they've got, a little bit smaller. Ah! Oh. Right? Is he in, so, is he in the bobsleigh, or is he pushing? He's, he's in it. Oh, right. okay. Right. He's wearing a uniform and a helmet, though, he's we can't see what he looks on, like. He's, he's got, got the his kit face. on. Um, yeah. Nobody knows who he is, but the country's loving it. Of course they're they are. like, well, it looks like we're gonna break all our records, you know. Good, it's good that they found someone new. Yeah. Bet the other fella who left is, is sort of kicking himself, thinking, oh, I could've been part of this. Anyway. This wasn't that bloke that had very short legs and long arms, was it? Anyway, what happened is, they're whizzing round the track and what have you. Faster than ever, yeah. Faster than ever, and the press are like going, beating all records here. They mm. started taking photographs. <gasps> lot of flashing. Lot of flashes from the cameras and stuff. Right, of course. Suddenly, the bobsleigh goes a bit sort of mental and whizzes off, off the track, right, into like all the tyres and stuff. That they have for protective. Oh, right. they love tyres, don't they? Bobsleigh members. <laughs> some of them you can, some, uh, sometimes you can find them swinging in one. Or maybe eating a banana. Ambulance comes rushing over and stuff. The other two members are looking pretty nervous for some reason. Mm. Oh, what are they doing? They're saying, look, um, don't take the helmet off because, you know, you can do more damage to the, the well, neck. Well, don't tell the paramedics how to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they know their job. Yeah, they know yeah, their yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. So Please, they were like, yeah. just, just, you know, and plus, you know, he doesn't, he, he came in at last minute to help us out. He doesn't want everyone to know who he is. He's, yeah. he's not after the limelight. Yeah. Like some of the members we used to have, but he just, yeah. he just was helping his country out. Yeah. Leave the helmet on. Anyway, they get him in the ambulance and stuff. The other two are looking a bit worried and what have you. They're Good. gutted, they lost the race. The little bloke, is the bloke not saying anything? Is he not? He's, he's in the ambulance now. Is he not saying anything though? Anyway, word got out, right, from one of the ambulance mm. drivers a few weeks down the line, once all the dust had settled on the Olympics and stuff and mm. light news day and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was reported that one of the ambulance drivers said that, that on that, on that sort of dreadful night when, you know, the country lost out on a medal in the bobsleigh, he sort of reported that there was a monkey in the back of the ambulance. People were like going, ah, you're joking, I don't remember you? this, I don't remember this you, not, you, Well, this is it, you see, because they sort of swept it under the carpet oh, a little bit. Right. They were like, this bullshit. is crazy talk, this. Bullshit. Bullshit. This is bullshit crazy again. talk. Once talk, absolute shit. Where'd you get this, this from? This is crazy talk, right? It is but, crazy talk, and it's from the mouth of Carl Pilkington. And, and, but the, but the weird thing is that backed it up, well, following week, um, there was a story of some people who visited the zoo, saw a chimp in a neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's this week's monkey news. Bollocks. Well, that's the end of another podcast. Um, thanks very much from me, Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Uh, goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Right. And thanks again to those guys at Positive Internet who host this podcast, the world's number one podcast. Um, we'd also like to congratulate Steve Carell from uh, the American office, um, who won a Golden Globe. Yes, congratulations, Steve, and obviously everyone involved with the American office. And um, <clears throat> for our American listeners, if you haven't checked out the American office on NBC, it's dynamite. It really is a cracking show. I don't know if you're a fan of the original, but if you are, or even if you're not, just watch it. It's great. It gets better and better week by week. It, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. it's absolutely brilliant. That's uh, NBC. I think that's Thursday nights, isn't it? After My Name is Earl. That's got to be the first time a Golden Globe has been won by two different people for the same character. I think you're probably right, mate. Cheers. Hey, Good. congratulations again for winning it all those years ago. Two. One, all right. two. I don't need to mention one. Two. Bye. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Mm -hmm.